Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the Exile Club and welcome to today's video. In today's video, you're going to learn how to use this crypto Excel tracker and cash out strategy workbook. A while ago, I produced a crypto Excel tracker that connected to live data and you could track your cryptocurrency in Excel. And that video was massively, massively popular with over 15,000 downloads of the crypto tracker sheet and hundreds and hundreds of comments on the video. I decided it was time to update this crypto tracker sheet and give you something a little bit more detailed and useful. Some of the comments left on the previous tracker were that it was only suitable for those that had once off purchases of particular coins. It didn't account for dollar cost averaging and it definitely didn't account for a cash out strategy. So this workbook will help you manage, track and cash out in a profitable way of your crypto portfolio. So if you're ready, let's get stuck in. So this here in front of us is a sample of the dashboard. And what we're going to go through in this video is we're going to have a look at the dashboard. We're going to see how you can set up your items. You're going to find out where you can download the workbook. But this video is going to be broken down into two. In the second part of this video, you're going to learn how to use the cash out strategy. And this is extremely important. And it's really what gives this workbook power and puts it onto steroids. The second video for this isn't going to be on my channel. It's going to be on the Crypto Rats channel. Now, the Crypto Rat is a colleague of mine from the global blockchain and crypto meetup community. I'll drop a link to that below. So I do hope that you will pop over and maybe attend one of the meetups. Now, he has prepared the cash out strategy sheet for this workbook, along with some of the interesting calculators that are available. So I'm going to drop a second link below this video also straight over to the video on the Crypto Rats channel. And you do need to go ahead and watch it. So what we have here is our dashboard. And our dashboard, once we have our data set up, there is some sample data in here. And we're going to go through all that. And based on the sample data, what this dashboard will show us is which of our coins is least profitable and most profitable, our over overall portfolio percentage change, our current investment value, our acquisition cost, whether we're up or down on our unrealized profit and our return on investment. If we have sales, it'll then bring in our sales value, our profit taken and our cost of goods sold. We then have a chart here which breaks down our holding based on percentage of coins. This chart here shows the actual cost of investment, the cost of investment being in yellow against the current value for each of the coins. It shows us the total quantity of tokens held, the number of sales if we have any. Over here, we will set up a exit strategy and based on this, when we make sales, it'll show us how much of our profit targets we'll have reached. Down here, this shows us the return on investment for each of our coins. And if we scroll down further, we have further details such as initial capital. So that's the money you put in, total sales, other income. Then we've got capital inflows, total purchases, and this will show us capital available. These figures here are not populated at the moment because we don't have any dummy data in here, but this will show us what exit profit that we're anticipating taking based on the exit strategy that you set up for the coins that you hold. So how does this all work? Well, when you open up this workbook for the same time, and as I said, you'll find a link below this video to go ahead and download this workbook. It's 100% free. It'll cost you absolutely nothing. So first of all, what you need to do when you start is put in your name. Then it will just go through that it is a free resource and you need to accept the terms and conditions and say agree. And it'll bring you on to the instructions video, which is this video here and the next video by Simon. From here, we can then click here and it'll bring us to our menu. Now you can already see in our menu, this workbook is an awful lot more detailed than the previous crypto tracker. We can get straight to the dashboard. We can go to the exit strategy, which Simon will go through. We can enter transactions. We can see all actions and we can update extra coin lists. 
Now you can get back to the instruction sheet if you need to. If you're looking for the top 250 prices from CoinGecko, you can click here. And we have a suite of calculators just as an additional resource that you can also click here to find. So what we're gonna look at now is entering in some transactions. So to start with, what we need to do is enter transactions. So this is our transaction entry sheet. The only fields in this entire spreadsheet that you need to complete are these peachy colored cells. Any of these light gray bluey cells do not enter anything in them. There are formulas in these and they're formula driven. It's also extremely important to note that this workbook runs off tables. And when you're working with tables, when you get to the end of a table, so we see this table here, the corner of it has a little kind of arrow in it. That shows that that's the end of a table. When it, you get to the end of a table, to insert a new row to the table from the last cell, press tab. And that is going to enter a new row into your table for you. So if you run out of rows, don't worry, you can add new rows. So first of all, what you need to do is enter in your fiat introduced. So the capital that you initially introduced. So in this example, we're gonna say we lodged 100,000 to let's just say Binance. If you withdraw any cash, you put in your withdrawal amount over here. Now your withdrawal amount should go in as a positive figure. So if you take out a thousand, just put in a thousand, do not put in minus a thousand. So you can put that into your withdrawals. Other income, on the other hand, is for additional income that you might earn, including farms, interest, staking income, airdrops, or anything like that. And you put it in, in the US dollar value. Now, the importance of these figures is that they help to calculate how much capital you have left for investing or reinvesting. So to enter your data, it's fairly simple. Now, this workbook works on average dollar costing. So it means you can have multiple purchases of the same coin, multiple sales of the same coin. And based on the purchases, this workbook is going to work out the average dollar cost. So the average dollar cost is a strategic way of entering and exiting the market to smooth out the cost and to average your costs. So we have some demo data in here under the purchase table. We have a purchase table and we have a sales table. And in our demo data, we have purchases of Bitcoin, Ether and Cub all on the 1st of the 7th. Now, how did I enter this? Well, very simply, so let's put in some more data. So let's say on the 1st of August, I bought some more Bitcoin and let's say I bought another half a Bitcoin and it cost me 24,000 including fees. In the total cost, I would include fees because that will account for all of your costs when you're working out your profit. Now, if for some reason the formula in the table doesn't fill down when you put in some more, go to the last formula and double click. And this is going to fill the formula down for us. So we see per coin that would have cost me 48,000. Let's put in some more purchases. So on the first of the eighth, let's say I bought some ether and let's say I bought five ether and it cost me 17,000. So it cost me 3,400 each per ether. Let's then also put in another purchase. Let's put in another purchase of cub. Let us say that we bought 5,000 cub. Let's say it cost us $2,300. So it cost us 46 cent. And we will put in a, another row. So let's put in P swap. Now, just because I have these coins in here, it is no, um, I, I'm not endorsing these coins at all. It's just purely for educational and training purposes. So let's say we put in 50,000 of these and let's say 50,000 of these cost us 5,000. So we can see now that's how you enter in your transactions and you enter in your transactions at your total cost that it actually costs you including fees. And this will then work out your average dollar cost. Now, if you're like me and you already have your crypto and you don't want to enter in every single transaction because it's going back quite some time and you already have your average dollar cost, you can put in one row for each coin and put it in as your total cost for 
how much it cost you all together. So if you had three purchases of Bitcoin, one for 10 grand, one for 15 grand and one for 20 grand, this is going to come up and it is going to show you that the average dollar cost, it's going to average it. So we have Bitcoin here. We have 44,000 of Bitcoin and we have one there at 48. So the average cost of that is actually going to be 46,000 per Bitcoin. And that's your average dollar cost. Now, once you enter these figures in here and have entered in your fiat, if you go to data and from data, hit refresh all. This is then going to do some calculations in the background. It's going to update everything for you. And if we now hop back to our dashboard, we can see that our dashboard has now updated with the information that we've added. But we have some warnings. We've got four actions to take. So let's click on this and see what actions it is it wants us to take. So first of all, it's saying we need to add Bitcoin and Ether to our exit strategy. And Simon is going to go through that with you in the next video. But it also says to include Cub and to include PSwap in the extra coins list. Now, what is this all about? Well, we have connected to two APIs to pull in the live pricing feed to this crypto tracker and exit strategy sheet. One of them is to CoinGecko and the other is to CoinMarketCap. Now, the one of the APIs will pull back the top 250 coins and any coins that are outside of that need to be added in manually. Now, we didn't want to be writing queries that has too many heavy API calls because at the moment, these API calls are actually free. So instead of pulling in the 6,000 coins at once, we've pulled in the top 200 coins and anything additional, if it's not in the top 250, you will get a warning and you need to manually add it to your list. So we need to include these on the extra coins list. How do we do this? Well, click me to add extra coins. So if we come over here, this will bring us to our extra coins sheet. And in our extra coins, we need to add in the data so our API can build the URL to go off and pull back the price feed for you. So we have Cub and we also, I'm just going to go back to actions there. It was Cub and it was PSwap that we need to add in. So we need to put in Cub is our ticker, our ID I'll get in a second. And we also need PSwap. And I'm going to show you now how to get the ID and the names for these. So what you're going to do is head over to CoinGecko. And let's search for Cub. And I know this one is Cub Finance. So we click on this. Now in here is where we get all of the details that we need to make sure we can pull in the price feed. So what happens is some coins, the ticker ID doesn't match the name or it doesn't match the actual API ID. And these are three different fields that you need. You need the name, you need the ticker symbol, and you need the API ID. So the API ID is down here, Cub Finance. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go back to my spreadsheet and I'm going to paste that into my spreadsheet. We can also see the name on this is Cub Finance. So I'm going to copy this and go back into my spreadsheet and paste it into my name. Now, I don't want to paste the formatting, so I'm going to format paint the previous cell and just copy it in here. Now we have PSwap as well. So let's go back here and put in PSwap. And we can see when we put in PSwap, we've got two coins with the ticker of PSwap. And that's why the ticker ID on its own or the name doesn't work. And we need the API ID. So I'm going to go to PokerSwap because it's PokerSwap is what I need. I'm going to copy my API ID from here. I'm going to go in and I am going to paste my API ID. I'm going to go in here and paste my API ID in here. And I'm also going to put in the coin name. Now, remember, as I said, not all the time will the name 
and the ID be the same. So we could see with Cub Finance in the ID, we have a hyphen, we don't have it in the name. So you need to make sure you get these in the correct order. This is your API ID. So now from here, if we go to data and from our data, we can refresh this information. This will then go ahead and work on our workbook. And we can see now that in our actions, these have removed from adding cub to, to our extra coin list to add cub to our, to our exit strategy sheet. Now I'm just going to go back now and we will go back to our dashboard and just go through some of the data again that we have now in our dashboard. With our dashboard, we have a slicer filter. And this will allow you to not only look at your portfolio as an overall portfolio, but it'll also help you look at individual coins so you can see what's going on with individual coins. So with our Bitcoin, for example, if we click on Bitcoin, it's going to filter our charts just down to Bitcoin. So we can see this is up 1% in an hour, but overall I'm down 8%. I have no sales. We can see our cost of investment is substantially higher than our current value. I'm holding one token. Um, down here, we can see that I don't have any of it in our exit strategy or has been sold. Now, Simon, as I said, will go through this a little bit more. As we scroll down here, we can see our initial capital, which we entered into our first sheet. We can see our total purchases and we can also see the capital we now have left available. Now, like I mentioned earlier on, when you enter the data to the cash out strategy sheet, these figures here will populate for us and you'll be able to see your anticipated project based on how you're going to cash out your holding, your average dollar cost and how you're actually going to cash out. Now, don't forget, as I said, it is really, really important to remember. So I'm going to enter transactions. The only cells in this entire workbook that you're going to enter data to are these peachy colored cells. If in blue cells formula doesn't drag down, just drag the formula down and it will drag down for you. When you open up the cash exit strategy, there will be a few lines of sample data in there. Just to overwrite these lines of data with your own data. And when you have your own data entered in, don't forget to say data refresh. Now the refresh is not only a refresh for your data entry items, but it's also a refresh for your coins. So from each page, we can go to our actions. Now I'm just going to quickly show you the exit strategy sheet. So here is our exit strategy sheet. And as I said, you are only going to enter information into the orange cells. All other cells have formulas in them. These green cells here, the pull in the prices will automatically populate. So it's key and it's crucial to only, only enter data into the peachy colored cells. So that is a general breakdown of this price, this live cryptocurrency tracker with exit strategy sheet. This is connected to live price feeding. Once you have this set up, when you're ready to make sales, when price targets are actually reached, this is going to tell you in your actions that you have sales to make. It's going to tell you how much of each token you need to sell. So all you need to do is set this up on a daily brace basis, hit refresh. You can see if you have any actions to take. If not, you can walk away until the next day. So don't forget, you can download this tracker clicking on the link below. You will also find a link to the second video in the description below. So I do hope that you enjoy this cryptocurrency tracker. If you have any questions or queries or comments on them, do drop it into the comments. And don't forget, if you have time, hop over to the global blockchain uh, cryptocurrency meetup community on meetups.com and attend one of our meetups. We'd really, really love to see you there. So until the next time, goodbye now.